G'day. Welcome back to Dad vs. Son, and we're going to try a playthrough of Field Commander Alexander from DVG. And we're going to start off with the first campaign, which is Branicus. Um, Righto. So, for you who've never played this, it's very well set up. Um, the game board itself, there's one for each campaign and each one has its turn track on it, the campaign set up, any options that are available to make life more difficult for yourself to get more victory points, enemy orders phase, enemy operations phase, a full sequence of play and the resupply. So for this campaign, uh, the scale is each force Infantry is 7,000 men or 2,000 horse for cavalry. Um, with the battlefield, which is this bit down here, um, we have Alexander and he has a phalanx, an infantry, a heavy cavalry and an archer. Now, Alexander starts off as Alexander 1, A1. Um, and what they have is a marking of zero up top here and a one down the bottom. So as per every force counter in these, uh, the top number is it's basically its initiative, which goes from zero through to six. And that'll simply tell us when they actually fight. The bottom number is its combat value. So as Alexander gets better at the moment, he's initiative zero, combat factor one. Once he improves to second level, he's now initiative one, combat factor two, and so forth. So those are his troops. If you have like our companion heavy cavalry here, which is initiative three, it is a four, superscript four. So Basically, because they're both fours, if he rolls a four or less, he'll inflict two hits rather than one. Some of the other ones, like, say, uh, chariots. This is an Indian chariot, just to show you. It's three superscript one. So, again, if you roll a two or a three, you'd get one hit. If you rolled a one, you'd get two hits. Once you get hit, you simply flip the counter over for one hit. And if it's got a reduced side, then it can take another hit and then it's destroyed. But other certain ones like the archers here, which are initiative five, combat value two, can only take one hit and then they're gone. So these are Alexander's forces. Phalanx, Infantry, Heavy Cavalry, Archer. In this game, Alexander can have advisors. There are five advisors all told, which give you different benefits. And we get to choose one this time. And the one I've chosen is Parmenium. And what he does is reduces enemy battle plans. And the way battle plans work is, for Alexander, he gets one battle plan for every combat value he has. So at the moment, he's got a combat value of one, he'll get one battle plan. For the enemy, they get one battle plan for every force they have. What Palmenian does is reduces the enemy battle plans by three, and that's why I've taken him to start with. Resupply, we start with 10 gold, which is placed up here. In Macedon, we have Alexander's army, and we also have a prophecy, and we have a prophecy also in Ilium. These are the prophecies, and they are random. And the idea being is once we get onto these areas, um, we can decide to accept or reject a prophecy. If we accept the prophecy, and succeed in carrying out what it said, then we can basically promote Alexander. This is the only way Alexander can be promoted within the game. 
So if we succeed in both of these prophecies, then Alexander will go from uh, first level to third level, which increases his uh, combat effectiveness and survivability. Righto. So Macedon, we've got Alexander in a prophecy. Ilium, we have another prophecy. In Karania, down here, the southern Greeks, we have a leader, Chares, or Kares, and he has an infantry, the sacred band, another normal infantry, and a phalanx. All done. This uh, shield and spears indicates a battle site. So we have one here, and we have one over in Granicus, which are our battle sites. This signifies that it's a pivotal area, um, so that um, this is the southern Greeks area, whereas over here at Granicus is not a pivotal area. Other pivotal areas are anywhere where there's a stronghold, and we have three of them, Sardis, Halicarnassus, and Lycia. So this is what we have in there. In Granicus, we have in this area, the Persians. And Granicus has an infantry, an archer, a heavy cavalry, a light cavalry, and as a leader, they have Memnon. And then in the three other pivotal areas, Sardis, Halicarnassus, and Lycia, we have a wall. And then we have a random troop, a random force. So for Sardis, they get an infantry, for Halicarnassus, they get heavy cavalry, and Lycia gets a heavy cavalry as well. So that's all the forces set up for the start of the game. Now, for what else do we have? <laughs> For the operations part of it, this is basically where the Persian reserves are going to come in. And the idea is that you've got these uh, eight operations counters, which are supposed to be stacked up. So you can't see what's on them, and you just turn one over each turn, and it tells you to either place troops here, or a wall here, or whatever else. And once you get the one counter that says, go, everything that's in here goes to Halicarnassus as reserves and then you set it up and start all over again so this area here for their reserves starts again with one random reserve and they've got a chariot okay so campaign rules we use the persians for deployments garrisons all that sort of stuff when we attack karania um, King Philip II is with us, and he will actually grant us, just for this battle, three extra battle plans. So we'll have three battle plans for him, plus the one for Alexander, which is four battle plans to start with. In every other battle, all we get is Alexander's combat value. So that's why we need to beef him up as much as possible, so that when we get back to Macedon, we can hopefully complete this prophecy and then this one in Ilium, and then by the time we get to Granicus, hopefully Alexander will be a level 3 rather than a level 1, and we can get 3 battle plans out of him. We can also spend gold to get battle plans, uh, 1 gold per battle plan. Uh, we can use gold to build a temple. Let me find a temple. And by building a temple, if we take the battle plan Fate, then we can have one re-roll battle plan, uh, one re-roll dice for each temple we have. So temples can be very handy at times. So it takes three gold to build the temple. The other thing we can do rather than build a temple is to build a city. And a city costs us five gold to build. And at the end of the game, if we win, it'll give us five victory points. 
to add on to our total. Now down on the turn track here, I'm not sure how well you can see it, there's black squares in all of these ones with a number, and it starts in spring of 335, uh, 335 BC with 25. So that if we complete the campaign here, we get a minimum of 25 victory points and then an extra five for every city that we've built. And that goes down, 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 down to summer of 334 BC where we have zero victory points other than what cities we've built. And if we go beyond that, minus five, minus 10. So the idea is to complete the campaign as soon as possible without killing off poor old Alexander. So what do we have to do to complete the campaign? Well, we have to conquer every pivotal position on the uh, map. So we have Caronia, Granicus, and the three strongholds at um, Sardis, Halicarnassus, and Lycia. And once we've taken Lycia, then we're done, and that's when we find out how well we've done. There's also a ship here. So usually you'd have to buy ships to transport your troops and everything else. But in this um, campaign, we can go from Cestus here to Ilium as a normal move rather than having to get uh, ships and stuff. right home. So that's what gold buys and how it's used and so forth. Now the other thing we have in this is what's called glory. And this is glory. And what we do every time we win a battle, we get two glory. And if we kill the leader during the battle, then we get an extra two glory. So each battle with a leader, we can get a maximum of four glory. And glory is used to get things like insights. So if we spend three glory, we get a random insight. And this is basically intel, stuff that's going to help us. If we spend seven glory, we can actually pick which insight we want. Or if we spend six glory, we can get another advisor to help us out. And that's the basic setup. I don't think there's too much else to tell you, so we'll get into it. So, sequence of play right here. First thing we do, preparation, advance to turn counter, down to 338 BC. Done. Next is refit. And this is where we can spend two gold to repair any of our damaged troops. We don't have any at the moment, so it doesn't matter. Next is enemy orders, and that's here. And it's a simple die six roll, adding the distance from Alexander to the stronghold. So Alexander's here in Macedon. So we have Cestus for one, Ilium for two, Granicus for three, Intisardus for four. And we go four plus five is nine, and nine is two gold to intimidate. So the way you can take strongholds rather than having a battle is to try and intimidate the people within the stronghold and if we can intimidate them enough then they simply surrender and we've won there and we get our um, get our two glory for intimidating them and winning and we'll also pick up the two gold if we do uh, Sardis by battle rather than intimidation, we won't get the gold. That's all that is. Oh, sorry, the other thing that glory can be used for is to help with your intimidation role. So, comes in very handy. Okay, so the next one is Halicarnassus. So this was four to Sardis. We have five, six to Halicarnassus and five, six to Lycia. So we'll do Halicarnassus and we have a six plus six is twelve and anything is a ten plus is nothing happens. Lycia, six plus two is eight, one glory for battle. So again, same sort of thing. If we take Lycia by battle, we'll get an extra glory. If we take it by intimidation, we don't get the glory. 
Okay, so that's the preparation for enemy orders. Then we have enemy operations, which is this part here. So what we do is we take one of these operations chits and have a look, and we get one force, two gold. So it means that unless we pay two gold to bribe some bastard, we'll take one random force and add it to their reserve pool. And consider I only have 10 gold to start with and I need gold to effectively move at times and everything else and to repair my troops. I'm gonna let it go. So we'll pick one random force and it is a infantry. So now there's a chariot and an infantry in the reserve pool for Halicarnassus. Now the only good thing about this is if I can get down and conquer Halicarnassus before this lot comes out, then they never come onto the board. So that's why I need a sort of blitzkrieg to uh, do it. And the only trouble is I've got to go out of my way to come back because I've got to take out these southern Greeks as well. So we now finish the preparation phase, we go on to the conquest, and the first is a scouting roll. So we want to move Alexander's army from Macedon to Caronia. So we have to roll a d6, and if our roll is greater than our forces, and we have five forces, then we suffer hits. So effectively, there's uh, not enough supplies or anything else, or we got um, ambushed along the way, or disease, whatever else, and we lose people. If our roll is less than our number of troops, then we have to pay gold. So basically, we're, there's not enough to forage or anything else, so we're paying for tucker, or bribes, or whatever the case may be. So we've got five. If we roll a five, then it's not going to cost us anything to move and we roll a one. So we've got a choice. A couple of choices, in fact. We can spend four gold and move our whole army into Kalania, or we can disband part of our army to cut down on our forces and pay less gold to go into Karania. Or we can just sit there fat, dumb and happy, and that's basically the end of the turn. We'll go into resupply and all the rest of it, and this starts moving down, which is not a good idea. So I'm actually going to pay the four gold. So we go from 10 down to six gold, and we can move into Karania. Now that we're in here, we carry out the battle. So we take all the forces there. So we have Charis, who is a, a initiative one, with his phalanx, which is initiative one, his basic infantry, initiative two, and his sacred band infantry, which is initiative three. The battle sequence is straight here. And the first part is enemy battle plans. So as we said, enemy battle plans, one per force, one, two, three, four, minus the three for Parmanian. So we randomly draw their battle plans and some of their battle plans are doubled up. So if they get more than one, then at times you can end up with two of different ones. So the battle plan they get is <laughs> deploy. So they're actually going to get an extra unknown force helping them out, and it'll be some Persians. Sneaky Persians have been bribing them and, and uh, sneaking some troops in. Now we get to do our battle plans. So we have one for Alexander's combat value, but we also get the three extra just for this battle from King Philip II. So we get four battle plans, and the first one I'm going to take is lead for Alexander. And lead increases Alexander's combat from one to two superscript one. So if he rolls a two, he gets one hit. If he rolls a one, he gets two hits. So that makes him a little bit more beefy. The second I'm going to take is rally. And rally is basically, it stops one hit. It's a little bit of armor. 
and it can be used on any of them. The third I'm going to take is charge. And I'm going to take two charges. And the reason for that is all cavalry, so heavy cavalry, light cavalry, chariots, or when we get to the Indians, elephants, can only attack every second battle phase rather than every battle phase. So, you know, they do a charge and then they wander away and regroup and then they do a charge and they wander away and regroup and so forth, rest their horses and so forth. What this does is basically allows them to do back-to-back -back attacks. So instead of going turn one, three, five, my heavy cavalry, if need be now, could do one, two, four, and so on. Uh, in fact, one, two, three, and then five, and so on, because we're taking two of them. So that's one, two, three, four of our free battle plans. I'm going to spend gold and take two flank attacks as well. Now, flank attacks means that any infantry, so um, heavy cavalry, or infantry or phalanxes and so forth that I have, if they score a hit, they can score an extra hit. So that gives me two free hits for two gold effectively. Um, and that is all I... Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six which is two gold I've spent, and I'm going to spend one more, which is regroup. And this is, if I lose a force, I get that force back at the end of the battle. So instead of them being destroyed or anything else, they've simply been dispersed, and then they come on back, we re-amalgamate them, or reintegrate them back into the army. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to cost me three gold. So we go from six down to three. And that's what we've got. So we've done enemy battle plans. Four minus three is one. Our battle plans, and then we resolve the battle. So the first thing we do is the pre-battle um, battle plans, and that's the deploy for the enemy. So they're going to get one force of Persians and they end up with a light cavalry, which is initiative four. And then we simply work our battles down. Each phase of the battle goes from initiative six down to initiative zero. Once we've done that, back to initiative six down to zero and keep on going until life is good last thing for battles normal forces do not attack leaders simple as that leaders attack forces forces do not attack leaders the only way that leaders can be attacked is by a leader now Charis, or Memnon, when we get to him, will not initiate attacks against the leader. Alexander has to initiate it. And once he does, then their leader is free to attack our leader. So we need to make sure that um, we do the right thing. Charis can take two hits. Alexander can only take one hit at the moment. So we really need to make sure if we're going to attack this guy, that we take him out really, really fast. And again, if we take him out, then all his forces will run away. Or we capture him, or whatever the case may be, battle over. Rather than having to slog through and kill his four other forces that he has. So let's get into it. So first thing is, our archers are initiative five, and they're going to roll. Combat value is two, so we need to roll a one or a two for one hit. And we get a three, which is a miss. The next thing is the Persian light cavalry hitting with two superscript two. So a one or a two is going to give them two hits. 
and they get a six, which is a miss. Now, the Sacred Band Infantry for Chavez and my companion Heavy Cavalry are the same initiative, so they fight simultaneously. So the Sacred Band needs a three to hit. I need a four or less to hit. Sorry, they need a three or less to hit. I need a four or less to hit. Here we go. So he gets a one, so he's going to do a hit. I get a four, so I'm going to do two hits. So his one hit, I'm going to put onto my archers and regroup them after the battle. So they've simply, sacred banders run up to the archers and the archers have dispersed. So that's done. Now I've got two hits to put on them. He's already fought, so there's not much sense in me attacking him at the moment when these guys are still able to attack. So I'm going to put one hit on his phalanx, and that way his phalanx goes from combat, uh, sorry, initiative one, combat three, to initiative zero, combat two. Like that. I'm going to put one hit on his infantry, and his infantry goes from initiative two, combat two, to initiative one, combat two, and then I'm going to use one of my flanks to do an extra hit on his infantry, and it's gone. And any destroyed enemy forces go up there, and they're worth gold at the end of the battle as well. So this is now completed. So next one is my infantry, needs a two to hit, Gets a one, so it does one damage. And I'm going to take out his phalanx. Which brings us to the initiative one. So we have Charis, initiative one, combat one, and my phalanx, initiative one, combat four. Now phalanxes are a little bit different in that if you get a four or less and inflict a hit, then they get another go because they're lots of blokes with lots of lots of lots of lots of long spears. So if they get to hit on a four or less, then he'll get another go at a three or less, and then another go at a two or less, and then another go at a one, if he keeps hitting. So there's a potential for a phalanx, for my phalanx here, to do a potential four hits. So here we go. So he gets a six and misses. I get a five and miss as well. So done. Which leaves Alexander now with his two superscript one. Now he has a choice. He can attack Charles, which is, you know, he's got a, a one in six chance of killing him outright, a one in three chance of. Um, hurting him to start with. And I want to try, if need be, to keep the rally for Alexander in case Charles comes back and hits him. So I'm going to attack their leader and try and take him out. So I need a one to kill him, a two to wound him. And I get a three. So nothing happened in there. And then we simply go back to the start again. So no initiative six, no initiative five. We have a cavalry that attacked last time, so it can't attack this time because it doesn't have a charge battle um, battle plan. So that's why I wasn't too worried about him. So next one is their sacred band against my companion, and I can use my charge so I can attack again. So he's going to need a three or less to hit, and I'm going to need a four or less to hit. So he gets a hit with a two, I get a miss with a five. So where do I want to put this hit? I could take it by the rally, but I don't want to because Charis is going to attack me before I get to attack him. So I'm going to leave that rally there. So I've got to take a hit. Um, I could take it on the heavy cav. And he'd go from initiative three, four, four to initiative two, three, three. 
and that might be my best bet. That way I'd get a full attack with my infantry and a full attack with my phalanx. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's my one hit taken. So the next is my infantry needing a two to hit. And I miss. And then we have my phalanx. And Charis is now going to attack Alexander. So Charis still needs a one. I need a four or less. Charis gets a five, so he misses. I get a two, so I can put out one hit. So I'm going to put the hit on the light cavalry because it's going to come back next time and it could have done two hits. Now it can only do two hits when it, if, it, if it gets a one. So I get to another roll on the phalanx now. So it's a three or less. And I get a two. So that's another hit. So I'm going to put that actually on his sacred band, which is now reduced down to initiative two. His light, sorry, his light cavalry is initiative three. So now I need a two or less. And I missed. So that's the end of that. <coughs> so now it's Alexander's turn to try and take out Chavez again. So I need a two to do one hit. I need a... Oh, I've got one flank, haven't I? I haven't used my flank, other flank, so I'm going to use my other flank first for the phalanx's hit, and I'm going to take out his sacred band. And my flank battle plan is done. Okay. Alexander needs to get a one to kill Charles. Gets a four and misses. So we're back up here again. No sixes, no fives, no fours, but we have his light cavalry who needs a one to do two damage. I still have one charge left, so I'll use that. And I need a three to do two damage, three or less. Okay, so he gets a five and misses. I get a one, which does two damage, which takes out his light cavalry. And Charis runs away. He's gone. He's headed for the hills, and that's the end of the battle. So any existing um, battle plans are then removed. We've got this guy who's regrouped, so he comes back. He goes, oh, there you all are. And I have one reduced heavy cavalry. So for winning the battle, I gain two glory. Yay! And my glory goes up here. And I don't have enough glory to do anything. Now this is a pivotal area because it has this Southern Greek symbol on it. So I have a choice now. I can either decide to govern the province, province and get uh, five gold every turn. So every time this moves and I get to a resupply, um, I'll get five gold. Get rid of that glory, in fact. Or I can decide to raise it to the ground. In which case, I'll get 12 gold straight up that I can use. And um, that way I've got enough gold then to keep moving. Which is probably more important at the moment. So I'm going to raise Karania and get 10 gold, uh, 12 gold. So that gives me 10 plus two more, it's 12 plus the three I've got, so I've got 15 gold. We've now finished the battle phase, the conquest phase. So we have a choice. We can go back to a scouting roll and move back to Macedon and so forth, or I can stop there and go into the resupply phase. But as soon as the resupply phase is gone, then we're back to this moving down, which I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to get Alexander to do another scouting roll to move back into Macedon. We still have five forces, so I really want a five. And I get a four. 
So it's going to cost me one gold to move back to Macedon, which I'll pay. So I now have 14 gold. And now I can either accept or reject the prophecy, and I'm going to accept it. So let's see what we've got. Care for these. Conquered two plus pivotal areas within four turns. One, two, three, four. Okay. So in the book, it gives you a little bit more of a write-up. It tells you what to do. So if we have a look at that one, we have... At any time during the next four turns, you must have two or more conquered pivotal areas on the map. So that's fine. We've already got one conquered pivotal area. So within the next four turns, we need to take Granicus. Not a hassle. So there's no battle or anything else to do here. So we're not going to do it. We don't care. We don't want to stop and go on to our next turn because we can still move to uh, Cestus. So that's what we're going to do. So now, another scouting roll. We want a five. We get a two. So it's going to cost us three gold to move into Cestus. So I'll pay the price. And we are now in Cestus. Again, we could stop, go on to the next turn, resupply phase, all that. Or... We can move to Ilium, and that's what I want to do. So again, scouting roll. We get a five. It's not going to cost us anything to move into Ilium. We are going to accept the prophecy, which is pray to the winds. Discard five gold within two turns. Right. So if I discard the five gold, um, I will be able to promote Alexander. If I do that within the next two turns. So I'm going to do that right now. So this 10 gold now becomes a 5 gold. And I'll get rid of that one as well. So therefore we have 6 gold total. We have completed this prophecy. Which means Alexander now flips and goes from A1 to A2. His initiative goes up to 1, and his combat value goes up to 2. So now we have two free battle plans for him, and he's got a better combat um, factor. So now the choice comes down to... Do we move from Ilium into Granicus now, or do we hold off for a turn? And I'm going to hold off for a turn, just so I can simply fix up my uh, my guy. So we've done the scouting roll, we've done that, we've moved the army. There's no battle or anything else to happen, so we're going into the resupply phase. So we gain gold. We gain gold five for each pivotal area governed, and we don't govern any pivotal areas at the moment because we raised this one to the ground. We get one per enemy force destroyed, and we destroyed four enemy forces. So that one goes back in there. So we get four gold for that. So now we have 10 gold. So we then do spend gold and glory. So I'm going to spend two gold. straight up and repair my companions. So now all of my forces are full bottle again. And I have a choice now spending gold in that I can either build a temple, build a city or get a force. I can only do one of the three unless I have Antipater as a um, advisor, in which case then I can do one of each rather than just one of. So I think a temple would be nice. A city would give me victory points. But what I'm starting to think of is a force 
because once I get to these guys, I need siege engines to basically knock down their walls so that uh, I don't take a negative when I'm attacking the people in there. So what to do? The temple will potentially give me re-rolls if I take the fate battle plan. It'll give me one re-roll, I should say, because I'll only have one temple. Or I take a force. And this is the last chance if I keep moving through and I don't have to stop. Um, my last chance to actually uh, probably do any of this. So I'm actually going to spend one gold. And I'm going to get myself a siege engine. So a siege engine is initiative six. So it's going to go first, which is great. It's only got a combat value of one when it's attacking troops. But if it attacks walls, it's a plus two. And that's really handy. Because walls, when they're undamaged, give us a minus two to any attack. So my archers that attack as a two basically can't attack because two minus two is zero. My companion heavy cavalry would go down to a two to attack. My infantry could not, could not attack and my phalanx would go down to a two as well. So it's just a good way of trying to take the walls out. And the walls take two hits, so undamaged they are a minus two to attack, and when damaged, they're a minus one to attack. And walls are treated as forces. So it's pretty important to me anyway. Okay, so we've done our spend gold, and now we have glory. And we have two glory to spend, but we don't have enough to do anything, because like I said, we need, um, excuse me, we need a minimum of three glory to get an insight, six to get an advisor, or seven to select an insight. So nothing happening. So that's the end of that turn. We go back to the start of the turn again. First thing, we move the campaign turn, and we're now in 337 BC to 336 BC. Refit, which we did. Enemy orders, so here we are. So Alexander now is one, two away from Sardis, so we're only gonna add two to the roll. So five and two is seven, and a seven is a garrison for Sardis. Now, they already have an infantry behind their walls, and they have picked up a peltist. And peltists basically have uh, short, darty-type spears, javelin-y things. Okay, and then it's one, two, three, four to Halicarnassus, and four to Lycia. So Halicarnassus plus four, and we have six plus four is ten. Do nothing. And six plus three is nine, which is two gold for Intimidate. Okay. So now with Lycia, if we Intimidate them and win, we'll get two gold. If we battle them and win, we'll get an extra glory. So it's a two-way street for that one. So enemy orders are done. Enemy operations, we draw another chit, see what we get. And it is one force, two gold again. Okay. And I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to pay the gold because I've only got seven at the moment. So that we get another random troop into the reserves and they've picked up a light cavalry to go with the chariot and the infantry. Okay. 
So enemy operations are done, we go into conquest. So we're going to move from Ilium to Granicus, which means we have to do a scouting roll. Now the beauty now is that I have six forces. So if I roll a six, it costs me nothing. If I roll anything else, it's going to cost me gold rather than troops. And we rolled a five, so it's going to cost me one gold to move in there. We move into Granicus. We get to have a battle. So we grab Memnon and all of his troops. Now Memnon is a initiative two leader. He has an infantry at two, an archer at five, a heavy cavalry at three, and a light cavalry at four. So he has one, two, three, four, five battle plans. Minus three gives him two battle plans. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, and the first one they have is a flank. So again, infantry or cavalry can score, will score one extra hit if they actually score a hit. And the second is Raid, which is a pre-battle, which is going to cost us gold one way or another. Okay, so Alexander has a combat value of two, so we get two free. I'm going to take Alexander with lead. And now he goes up to a three superscript one to hit. I'm going to take rally for two. That's our freebies. Now with their raid pre-battle plan, if they roll a one or two, I will lose two gold. If they roll a three to six, I will lose one gold. So I need to make sure I have at least two gold left here. So the first thing I'm going to take is a charge by two. Again, so that's two gold, which means I can effectively spend a maximum of two more. <clears throat> so I'm going to take one flank and I'm going to take my regroup again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, minus two is four gold, leaving me with two at the moment. So then we do the pre-battle plans, which is their raid. They roll a three, and a three to six is one gold. So we lost one gold. And that goes back in the bin. So they have one flank to use. Well, I've only got one flank to use, so I don't really need that there either. Okay, so again, we start from the six, move our way down. So I have my siege engine that needs a one to hit and gets a six. We then have his archers and mine, which need twos to hit. He gets a five and misses. I get a two, I can inflict one hit. So his worst, most potent, I should say, is his heavy cavalry here. So I'm going to turn that over and that becomes now that was a three, yep. Yeah. Becomes a two, hitting on twos rather than threes. I'm going to use my flank. Ah, oh, sorry, I can't because he's not infantry, he's archer. So next one is his light cavalry. And his light cavalry is going to do two damage on a one or a two. And he gets a six and cannot attack again this turn, oh, next turn, sorry. Now my heavy cavalry. Two hits on a four or less, and we get a four. So two hits on that, I'm gonna hit put one hit on his heavy cavalry and take it out. I'm gonna put one hit on his infantry because they haven't had a go yet, and I'm going to use my flank 
to take his infantry out. So, finished, we go into Memnon and my infantry. We both need twos to hit. He gets a five and misses. I get a one and hit. This guy is not attacking next turn, so I'm going to take out his archer. Like that. And then it's the turn of my of Alexander and my failings. So the first thing I'm going to do is Alexander is going to try and attack Memnon because I want the glory. So Alexander will get one hit on a two or three and two hits on a one. He gets a four for a miss and we go back up to the front again. Okay, so my siege engine needs a one to hit and misses. My archers need a two to hit and hit. So his light cavalry becomes initiative three and um, drops from the twos to ones. And then it's my heavy cavalry against his light cavalry. So I use my charge. And I really wanted to kill this bloke and it doesn't look like I'm going to get a chance to. So he gets a, he doesn't get to attack at all, sorry. Because he attacked last time. So I get a three. I take out his light cavalry. It's gone. And Memnon runs away. And is running, running, gone. Flank attack goes away. All my battle plans that I wasted money on go away. And we did it. So we get two glory for winning the battle. But we don't get the extra two glory for killing Memnon. So... This being a pivotal area, we get the chance now to govern or raise. And again, I need the money because I only have one gold left. So I am going to raise, which gives me 12 gold. So there we have 10. And I'll put a three out and get rid of the one. So we have 13 gold all told. Right. Oh. We also now have two pivotal areas under our control. So we fulfilled this prophecy, which means Alexander upgrades again, and he goes from Alexander 2 to Alexander 3. And he's initiative 1 still, but his combat value is now 3 rather than 2. So he's getting into the stride and having fun. Again, normal thing, we could stop and wait there, um, go through the resupply phase and so forth. But I've got enough gold to go on. So I'm going to do a scouting roll into Sardis. So again, I have six now, so I want a six. I get a five, it's gonna cost me one gold. So this three becomes a two. And we move into Sardis, which has two units and a wall. So they have a Pelthists at initiative four and an infantry at initiative two. No leaders. So they have one, two, three forces as such. Memnon, uh, sorry, Parmenion uh, reduces that to zero battle plans for them. And we get three free battle plans. Um, so I'm going to take Rally for one. I'm not worried about um, lead for Alexander this time because he's not fighting a leader. So that's one. Um, ba -bum -bum. I'm going to take one charge. And I'm going to take 
one flank. And that's it. So one, two, three, all ready to go. Is that what I want? I'm going to take a regroup as well. So that's going to be one, just in case I take a hit. Okay, so one gold. So again, starting here, and what we want to do is try and knock down the walls. So my siege engines this time are a three or less to do a damage on the wall. And we get a four and miss. My archers are next would hit for a, a two, but it's minus two attack, so they can't do anything. So it's their Heltists now that they get a go. They hit on a one. They get a five and miss. My companion heavy cavalry now is hitting on twos rather than fours because of the wall and misses. My infantry is two minus two, so can't roll. So it's their infantry's turn. They need a two, to, two or a one to hit. They hit. So I'm going to take out my infantry at the moment because they've just had their go and the archers are going to be up before their peltists. Which brings us to a the phalanx, which usually hits on a four, so it's going to now hit on a two and gets a three and misses. And Alexander, who usually hits on a three, who hits on a one. Whoops. Sorry and gets a two and misses. So you can see how much the walls really affect you. Oh. So back up to the front again, fire our siege engines and we need a three or less and get a six, of course. Our archers can't do anything. So it's their peltus needing a one and they score. So I'm going to use my rally then we have the Heavy Cavalry hitting on twos and gets a six. Their infantry hitting on two or one and they get a hit. So I am going to lose my archers. Simple as that. And then we have my Phalanx hitting on twos and misses and Alexander hitting on ones and misses. So you can see how difficult it can be if you can't knock down those bloody walls. So I can stop the battle at any time that I want and simply retreat back to Granicus, but I don't want to. I want to keep going. So, okay. Siege engine. A two. So we hit the wall. So the wall is only a minus one now. Their Peltist hitting on a one. And he gets a hit in. <laughs> oh, you poo head. Okay. So I'm going to knock down my um, Phalanx. Okay. So now it's my Heavy Cavalry hitting on threes. And he gets a five. Jesus. Their Infantry hitting on a two. And they hit. <laughs> oh, sugar. Okay, there goes my phalanx. And then Alexander hitting on a two. Which he hits. Yay! Okay, so a Peltus can only take one hit. So I'm going to take him out. There he goes. Back to the start again. And we have... Uh, a three or less to destroy the wall, and we miss. So the heavy cavalry is hitting on threes and misses. <clears throat> wow. The infantry hitting on a two for them, miss. Alexander hitting on a two, and he hits their infantry. Back to the start again to destroy the wall, and we destroy the wall. 
So now my heavy cavalry is hitting on fours and does two hits and knocks them out. And that was absolute rubbish. And my infantry comes back as a two. Righto. So we didn't take it by intimidation, so we don't get the gold. Um, we have 11 gold, but I think we want to... Uh, can we keep going or do we want to stop? Okay, so we get our two glory for winning. So we have six glory now. Um, bum, 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 bum. I'm going to push on, so I am going to raise this again. Sardis has been raised, and we get 10, um, sorry, 12 gold. So the 20, 10 becomes 20, and the 1 becomes 2. Oh, poor beasties. And we have 23 gold now. So we're going to move on to um, Karia. So we have four units now. We roll a five. <laughs> uh, if the roll is greater, suffer hits. So I'm going to take one hit on my infantry. And we move to Karia. And that's where I'm going to stop. Do I want to stop there? Or do I want to go in here? Oh. Because I really don't want them getting all of these. If I can take Halicarnassus, they will never see these res uh, reserves. And I think I'm going to have to take that chance. So we're going to try and scout into Halicarnassus. We really want a four. We get a two, so it's going to cost us two gold to go in there, and we do. So this three becomes a one. So we have 21 gold in the treasury. Walls come over, and they have heavy cavalry. Okay, so again, one, two forces for two battle plans, minus three, they don't get any. We have uh, Alexander at a three, so we get three battle plans. So first one is going to be rally. Second one is going to be regroup. I'm going to give Alexander a lead this time because I want him to hit a bit harder as necessary. I cannot envelop, so I don't care about that. So that's one, two, three, which is what we've got. Oh. Hey! I'm going to do three charges. So that's three gold. And I'm going to do three flank is six gold. So this 20 now becomes a 14. Remove the one, it becomes 15. We have 15 gold left. Right. Let's do this. So first up, Siege Engine against Walls. We need a three or less. We get a one. So the walls have been damaged. Next up, we have our Heavy Cavalry against his Heavy Cavalry. He needs threes to hit. And we have threes as well because of the minus one to the attack. Okay, he gets a one, so he's going to do two hits. And we get a three, so we're going to do two hits. So two hits on us. The first one, I'm going to use the rally. The second, I'm going to take on the infantry. He's gone. 
regroup. Um, and then two hits on him is one and two. And he's gone. Now all we have is the wall left. It doesn't attack, but we have to attack here. As far as I'm aware, because it's treated as a force. So now Alexander's having a go at minus one. So he is three, superscript one. And he gets a three and destroys the wall. And we have taken Halicarnassus. So this doesn't matter anymore. We've got 15 gold, so I don't think we need any more at the moment. So I'm going to govern rather than raise Halicarnassus. There we go. And we get two glory for doing the deed. So we now have eight glory. <clears throat> and because I don't care about this anymore, I'm going to go straight into the resupply phase. So gain gold. So five per pivotal area governed. And we have one, so we get five gold for that. And then we get one per enemy force destroyed. So we've got five for the govern, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 14 gold. So there's 10, 14, which takes us to 29 gold. So then spend gold and glory. So the first thing we're going to do is we get our infantry back. Regroup. We get rid of these battle plans. Righto. So what we want is some more troops. So I'm going to spend some money and I am going to what do I want? We've got a wall, so I need harder hitting things. I gain I can only buy one thing. They've only got this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy another siege engine for one. That takes us down to three, leaving us with 28. Now that'll give me two shots at their bloody wall. Hopefully knock it down before I have to worry about attacking anyone. Okay. Now I've got gold done. It is, well, glory. And I have two, four, six, eight glory. Okay, I'm going to spend Okay, I'm going to spend six glory and get Hephaestion on and he basically gives Alexander a plus one to his battle. So he's now hitting for four, which is good, which leaves two glory, which is not enough to do anything else. Um... Yep, I could have taken a two insights without looking at them, 
or one insight with looking at them. But um, I'm just going to go with that straight up. Okay. There's nothing else to spend glory on. So next turn, spring of 335 BC. We've advanced the turn counter. Refit. We have nobody to refit because we had the regroup. Enemy orders. This is the only one we have. We're one away. So Lycia gets a four plus one is five. And a five is minus two gold or suffer a hit. Oh, I think gold. Lose two gold. Done. Operations phase does not matter because we hold um, Halicarnassus and they can't get any reserves in there. So we go straight into the conquest. So we have the um, scouting role. We have two, three, four, five forces. We roll a four, so it's going to cost us one gold to move in there, which we do. There's the gold. And then we can get into a fight. So I could have tried intimidation, but I don't care. Um, because having these one, two, three raised areas um, would give me a minus three straight up. And I needed a, uh, an 11 plus to be um, successful. So no, it's not going to happen. Righto. So again, they have two forces as such. So it's two battle plans, minus three, so they get none. We get three battle plans. So the first one again is going to be a rally. The second is going to be lead. So with lead and Hephaestion, Hephaestion, oh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it properly. He's now three, four, five, superscript one. We are going to, we don't care about regroup because this will be the end of this one. Uh, we have these two, so we'll take uh, we don't care about flank. So it's simply going to be charge and we will take Oh, who cares? What do we get up there? 25. So I'm going to take five charges. I don't think it would have come down to that at all, but I'm going to take five. So we go down from 25 to 20 gold. And there we go. So getting into it, we have two siege engines needing three or less to hit their walls. And we get one hit with a two, so the wall's reduced by one. Then it's their heavy cavalry and our heavy cavalry. We've got a minus one, so both heavy cavalry are at threes, doing two hits. They get a three and do two hits. I get a six and no hits. So the first hit is going to be the rally. It's gone. The second hit will be on the infantry. Mm, yes, because the infantry's combat value doesn't change. It's still a two, it's just this initiative goes down. Okay, now we're into here. So infantry first, combat value two, minus one, so it needs a one to hit and misses. Alexander is three, four, five, superscript one, minus one, so he's four, superscript one, and gets a four and does one hit to the heavy cavalry. We go back to the start again. Uh, we'll do these one at a time. So the first one shooting at the wall, three or better, misses. The second one shooting at the wall, three or better, misses. Um, okay, we'll use our first charge so that our heavy cavalry can still attack. And he's hitting on a three or less. 
and gets a two, which is two hits. First hit takes out the heavy cav. Second hit takes out the wall. And we were ah, successful. We get two glory for the battle. Third glory as an extra. We don't get the gold. And we can decide to raise or govern there. And we'll govern because we're feeling nice at the moment. There we go, just like that. Battle plans go away. And we have succeeded in the mission. So we go through. And what we're finished with is 20 gold to start with, because we don't go back up to, um, oh, sorry, we go through the resupply phase first. So, okay. So gain gold. We are governing two areas. So that's 10 gold. And we have these two. So that's 12 more gold. So we've got 20, 30, Two gold. So we've gained our gold, spend gold and glory. Well, I don't want to spend anything. It doesn't really matter at the moment. So we've got all finished, 32 gold, five glory. We have two advisors. Alexander's up to level three. We've got two siege engines, our companion heavy cavalry, and some wounded, reduced infantry. We finished with 25 victory points, plus two cities being governed. So, um, yay! Which is wonderful, but we haven't built any cities, so we don't get any extra. Um, so, 25 victory points. Can't argue with that. Pretty good go. Um, did I make mistakes during it? Yes, I did. I think at uh, the Battle of Halicarnassus, I think I may have forgotten to use my, or overused my um, charge. But I can't remember. But all in all, yeah, we got there. Left a lot of destruction along the way, but it yeah, started to get nice in the end. So that's it. Um, the next campaign, if we go on with that, I think is Issus, where we uh, basically finish while well, starting Lycia and then uh, follow our way around. Mm. Okay, so Thanks very much for watching. Um, I know it's a little bit long, but an hour 20, a bit under. But um, that's the way the game goes. Take care. Enjoy. Let me know what you think. Bye for now.